Okay, what makes uh, humans stand out from the rest of the other species inhabiting our planet is the ability to create art forms as means of expression, such as sculpture, painting, drawing, building, dancing, and particularly important, music. The degree of sophistication that we reach tells a lot of the possibilities of our skills. We now know, supported by science, in how many ways being exposed to these art forms is good for our brains, our he hearts, our minds, and our souls, and how being exposed to damaging um, harm in electromagnetic pulses, radio frequencies, microwave radiation, could be very, very uh, uh, ha hazardous for, for us. Just very recently, about 15 years ago, a new device we can compare to a telescope or a microscope was developed by Dr. John Stuart Reed. It is called the Cymoscope, which is that thing, which gave us a tool to study the science of sound made visible, and it's called cymatics. It is based on the principle that when sound encounters a membrane such as your skin or the surface of water, it imprints an invisible pattern of energy. In other words, the periodic vibrations in the sound sample are converted and become periodic water ripples, creating beautiful geometric patterns that reveal the once hidden realm of sound. If we could see the sounds uh, around us with our eyes, we would see myriads of holographic bubbles, each like with a kaleidoscope-like pattern in its surface, just like that. We can trace cymatics back at least a thousand years to, to African tribes. And this is what, what they used to do. They put some sand on top of the drum, and then you see what, what happens when you See the pattern? Who would have thought about it, huh? And depending on the peach, the, the pattern changes. So since then, uh, scientists and inventors like Leonardo da Vinci or Galileo Galilei, you know, 15th, 16th centuries, Robert Hooke, uh, 16th century as well, Ernst Kladny, which is a German musician and scientist, sometimes known as the father of acoustics. He almost certainly had access to Hooke's work, but it is Kladny whose history has chosen to acknowledge for his major study of this class of phenomena. This is the guy. He used a sand strewn brass plate excited by a violin bow. Uh, since brass is highly resonant material, uh, he found that a large number of archetypical geometric patterns could be created depending on, on where of the edge of the plate the bow was drawn. You know? So we can see the, this experiment right here. And these patterns are now known as the Kladni figures. We're going to see the patterns right next to this. You see, it depends on where, where he, he, he does that and the pattern changes. So that means that it, for each frequency or each note, there's a, there's a, a corresponding pattern. So it's not just the sand jumping all over, it, it, it takes a geometric pattern. There we go. So uh, with this experiment, Kladni come up with these uh, figures, and, and you can see how many different patterns you can obtain applying different uh, notes or different frequencies for, for, for this matter. You know? So uh, another people that, that uh, contributes to these studies were Michael Faraday in, in 18th century, Lord Rayleigh, 18 and early uh, 20th century, uh, Margaret Watts Hughes, uh, Mary Desiree Waller, those, all, all those guys are more contemporary to us. Um, Hans Jenny, uh, Alexander Lauterwasser, uh, Thomas J. Mitchell, and of course, George Stuart Reed, that we already mentioned, right? So now let's uh, take a closer look to music. Now, music is a combination of sounds and silences arranged in time. It helps us to express our emotions, feelings, state of mind, etc. But in order to be pleasant, it has to be tuned to a certain frequency previously agreed upon. In 1955, the International Standard Organization 
fix this tuning to the node A, which is La, equals 440 hertz. But before that, it was rarely used by musicians, orchestras, uh, chamber quartets, church choruses, etc., all over the world. You can take a look here, and there is nowhere to be found that 440 tuning since uh, we can trace it back to the 14th century and we go all the way up until the uh, early uh, 20th century when it showed up, United Kingdom, Germany, and the United States 440, and then they standardized that in 1955. So what happened based on what and who standardized uh, that frequency after World War II? Well, according to the Harvard graduate, Dr. Leonard Horowitz, in the Militarization of Music, he explains that the Rockefeller Foundation funded a research made by AT&T and the U.S. Navy based on the disruptive nature of this frequency, 440, and so they asked the ISO for the music tuning standardization worldwide, which at that time was very protested by most of the Western world orchestras and instrumentalists. So I'm, I'm not a scientist, I am a musician, and based on my own experience, I choose 432, over 440 because tune, uh, to tune in because of the more natural and warm feel that I get from this particular frequency. The la note of the guitar, uh, uh, it's, it's tuned 432, means that when that string is plugged, it will go up and down 432 times per second. Since frequency is spread in the environment, the body of the guitar will start to vibrate along with this frequency, and so will the surroundings of the guitar, including people. And this is a powerful force, you can see. <laughs> wow. There are several aspects in music. The emotional and mental energy in it, the intention behind it, and the physics of it, its frequency, geometry, etc. Positive intentions, emotions, and thoughts in music can provide healing regardless of its physics, but proper physics can take the healing to a whole other level. This, this means, as the cymatics show, 432 hertz, will create this geometry in physical matter, which includes our own bodies. There's a very professional 28 pages scientific study. We can see it right here, how they, they try the 440 standard tuning. And you can see the shape, the geometric shape is, is not as sharp as it, as it comes with the 432, which is kind of sharp and the figures are really well shaped, no, not shake at all. And this one is kind of broken pattern. Can you see how, how there's missing parts over there, over there, down below? So that's, uh, that's part of, of, of the, 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 the graphics no, that, you, that we can get 
out of the, the tuning. And that, look how sharp it is and beautiful. Right? And this is the same note with a different tuning, 440. And you can see again, the, there's something missing. There's a, there's a very professional 28 pages study, scientific study that's been published showing clear reduction of inflammation, stress levels, and other symptoms by listening to 432 hertz music in Pythagorean tuning only three times a day for 35 minutes each time in a period of seven days. You can read the whole study at the public online library strip, and the name of the document is Spiritual Results Music Study. So Scott Onstead, among others in Secrets in Plain Sight, has shown how our measurement systems, such as miles and meters, are not random, but correspond to natural distances found in nature. Therefore, they resonate with sacred geometry. In music, the same note on higher and lower octaves is found by dividing or multiplying the frequencies by two. He also showed that the number 42, 432 and its octaves are found frequently in measurements of space and, and time through our galaxy. You know, for example, the mentions of our sun, the diameter, you no, know, which is 432,000 times two, or the moon, which is Two, uh, 2,160 miles diameter, which is 4,320 uh, divided by, uh, by two. Then the, the, the galactic cycle, the precession of the equinox, which is 432 times 60, 60 being at the basis of how we measure time. So we can see really multiple uh, examples of how this, this correspondence uh, works. So everything in creation, all matter, is in a state of vibration. 432 hertz is in tune with the frequency of nature throughout the cosmos. If humans are out of tune with it, it creates discomfort. Listening to music tuned in 432 hertz help us realign with our environment and the natural geometric patterns of the universe, promoting well-being physically, mentally, and emotionally. Uh, we can see uh, uh, examples before the 50s standardization, Egyptian music, uh, music traditionally made Tibetan singing bowls, Australian diggity do, sitar Indian music, and many others have been tuned to 432. Sounds in nature, such as waterfalls, wolves, whales, dolphins, and birds, all singing. Some Amazonian shamans have been measured, and they are all using these frequencies. This is Dr. Masaru Emoto, he studies water. And so what happens to water when it's exposed to pollution or to prayers or to good music or bad music, no? And he's been able to photograph the gravity crystals before and after these exposures, and here are the results, no? Here's a frozen crystal water that just froze it and then takes the picture. And this is after prayer. You can see a big difference, right? The pattern that shows. The heavy metal exposed, uh, this water crystal exposed heavy metal music, frozen, and then he took the picture. You can see, and you can see the difference between uh, that and the Mosul music, right? And usually uh, classical music back in the day was tuned to 432 or something closer to that. So since our body has proven to be made out of water, and water is matter, and now we know that sound leaves a very unique, beautiful geometrical pattern depending on the frequency we're being exposed to, and thanks to the cymoscope, we are now even able to actually see the sound. It is easy to understand why is it to be very important to expose ourselves to healthy tones, healthy frequencies, and healthy music. We are the water people. I hope uh, it, it's clear, a little bit more clear for everybody what, what's this all about and why is it uh, sound transforms matter. Um, I'm gonna proceed to play uh, three songs for you. Uh, my guitar is, of course, tuned to 432. And um, I hope this, uh, I'll just help you guys. Uh, we're just trying to share some information that we have and um, well, I hope you just try it out. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. 